And now another wonderful reader, and that is Karen Lynch. Thank you. I'm pretty sure Amy put me in this book for the comic relief, so feel free to laugh. This is called Thorazine. When I was seven, my mother taught me how to kill myself. She said, you must hold the gun firmly to your temple, squeezing the trigger without hesitation. Don't be a wimp about it. The bullet then pierces the soft flesh of your temple, traveling through the occipital lobe, taking out the executive suite of the brain. Maybe she didn't say executive suite, but her words made me picture a Wall Street financier doing the deed in his private office bathroom. Mom said those who failed to follow these simple instructions risked leaving themselves alive and hideously deformed. Hideously, she emphasized. Mom shared other useful insights she had acquired along the way, such as her certainty she could perform a competent emergency tracheotomy using just a steak knife should we be dining out and I ever begin choking. Though mom had spent a great deal of time in psychiatric hospitals, I probably don't need to say here that mom had no formal medical training. She was an autodidactic physician. I hate to sound like one of those I blame my parents for everything people, but her offer to perform surgery is the probable source of my neurotic phobia of steak knives, restaurants, and meat. We never owned firearms during my childhood, which was a good thing given mom's history. Nonetheless, the vivid picture of my self-inflicted headshot made cameo appearances as I grew older. I had never touched a firearm until I became a police recruit, nor had I ever seen one in the hands of any of the trippy, hippie tribe who raised me. But mom was so detailed in her instructions, at times it seemed she hoped I might somehow acquire a revolver and do myself in. Mom's Thorazine came in a jumbo bottle, similar in size to a Costco bottle of ibuprofen that might last an average family 10 years. When she took the medication, our life was calm and relatively predictable. I would take the bus to school, then return home to find Mom where I'd left her, harmlessly perched in bed, reading historical novels, and smoking cartons of Marlboro Lights. I loved the periods of our life when she took her meds, small lozenges of tranquility that kept the dreaded manic episodes at bay. But most of the time, Mom refused to take her prescriptions, saying she hated the side effects of lethargy and weight gain. A few weeks off Thorazine, Mom's mania would return the upside to her bipolar, and then all bets were off. Mom might then lock herself in the bathroom, hollering that she was slashing her wrists. There was never any actual slashing, no blood or razors to be found. Her screaming was gesture designed to manipulate me into calling her ex-boyfriend to save her. Reliably, I would call him, playing my part in Mom's script, and Jim would arrive stage left, the Colt 45 drinking, Paul Mall smoking, white knight in, Chevy, in a Chevy pickup. Mom had achieved her desired reaction, never intending to voluntarily remove herself from the planet. Like those who test positive for a disease, never showing any symptoms, Mom was a suicide carrier, not victim. <laughs> when the time finally comes, I will disregard Mom's vivid instructions. Having no access to a firearm and no desire to make myself hideously ugly in the event of failure, I will choose the most obvious and convenient of escape routes.